other happens with kids you have brought up in the orphanages? Yes. Many of the children that I've rescued back in wartime, and I'm talking 10 years ago or more, many of them actually work for us now. As I said earlier, we have about 260 people on our payroll per day, seven days a week. Many of these children work for us. Many of these children through the education that they got through, okay, the ministry, some of them got government jobs now. Some of them have got really good jobs there. So uh, uh, I believe we've been pretty successful when you're dealing with war children, children of war, victims of war. It's pretty difficult to have a successful rate with these children. We have had very good success with them. And are you their pastor? So are you the someone who leads the church? No, I'm I'm in no means to be someone to call myself a pastor. I, I uh, I'm evangelist. You know, we, there's a fivefold ministry out there. But to these children, I'm more of a dad, more of a father. Many of them call me father. Many of them call me dad. Uh, so I don't I don't look to them as being a a pastor or evangelist to them. I look to them as being their parent. Uh, I treat them just like they're my own child. When they're bad, I correct them. And when they're good, I encourage them, you know. Have you, uh, so uh, have there comes to, uh, have comes ideas that someone maybe would like to adopt a child you are growing up? You know, there's a lot of organizations in East Africa to adopt children. Uh, we don't adopt our children out. I believe a lot of it can be out there to make money because, you know, to adopt a child is a lot of money. The average child adoption in a third world country from the U.S. is about eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. I don't want to adopt any of my children out because I feel that I'm giving up. Uh, the other thing is I have no problem with third world country adoptions, but God didn't send me there to bring those children back to America or to bring them to another country. He sent me there to help change a nation. You don't change a nation through adopting out children. Some people will say, well, I want to bring that child from Africa to America to educate them. So they'll go back to their country and do some good work. Listen, let's be for real. You bring a child from Africa to America, that child is not going back to the bush of Africa because America will spoil you. They're not going back. It just don't happen. So I feel that if I adopt my children out, in my heart, I feel I'm giving up on that child. Uh, I, I can educate them. I can give them, you know, three meals a day. I can give them clothing. I can give them everything they need. Are there relationships with government, with local uh, authorities? Uh, you, you know, <clears throat> you know, if you go on the internet and you start researching machine gun preacher, you know, the internet says I'm the most controversial preacher in the world today. You'll read good stories and you'll read bad stories. Uh, as far as my relationship with the government, I believe it's pretty good. I'm one of the only foreigners in the country to own, okay, like a security company. So I believe I got a very good, okay, um, relationship with the government in all the countries that I work in. Mm -hmm. And do you have um, maybe ideas or uh, some um, yeah, ideas from, for example, motorcycles clubs that they want to maybe somehow help you by your mission I, all the world? I have a lot of motorcycle clubs from around the world. Some of the top 10 most dangerous, notorious motorcycle groups in the world. I have a relationship with all of them. Uh, I know all the, the big leaders, most of them, around the world. Uh, a lot of them have donated. I, I can't mention the names but one of the top 10 most dangerous motorcycle groups in the world just done a charity ride last summer for me. So a lot of these groups that people fear that people think are no good are the very groups that also raise money
to help me save children's lives. So uh, I don't I don't think that I don't look at motorcycle groups being dangerous. Maybe it's because you know that's the life I live. You know. But one thing I can tell you that these motorcycle clubs around the world, you gotta remember, those guys are fathers, those guys are grandfathers, and the majority of them are all good people. But I believe that there's bad people in everything. There's bad people in government, there's bad people that are policemen, there's bad people that are in the military, and there are bad people in biker gangs as well. Do you have uh people from uh, from the military, from the army that they ask you, I would like to have contact with you, please uh, help me with my, uh, with my uh, things I've done, you can know, you advise me, can you support me? I have a lot of military people that have <coughs> been in the wars that's been going on the last few years and maybe got caught up in things or done things that they're having a hard time dealing with. I don't have the words to help them. The only word I have is Jesus. You know, I've been caught up in everything that you've been caught up in. You know, maybe there's a guy listening right now or a lady listening right now that have been caught up in war and you're just not able to function. You're not able to live life. You, you have a lot of things going on up here. I can tell you that what I've been involved with for two decades, two decades of guerrilla warfare, the only reason I can sit here today and be sane and be able to talk, it's not because of Sam Childers, it's because of Jesus Christ, that's it. There's nothing else. So the only advice that I can give you is find somewhere that you can go and grab a hold of the Holy Spirit and let God work in your life.